there's no guarantee that this well will strike any oil or gas. In fact, in remote areas, half of all drilled wells strike nothing at all. To improve his odds, Tony's assembled a very experienced crew of roughnecks, led by Maltese driller Noel Shembri. But Tony's team has their work cut out for them. The client, Gaz de France, thinks they've located a new reservoir of natural gas almost three miles beneath the sea floor. But to get to it, the crew will have to drill at an angle through 40 layers of rock. By adding or removing weight from the drill pipe, Noel can control the direction of the drill bit. Under such immense weight, even steel pipe becomes flexible. But Noel needs to be careful, because the rock is littered with high-pressure pockets of seawater. If the drill nicks one, the high-pressure water could flood back up the hole with such force that it could destroy the well or even damage the rig itself. So Noel will have to thread the drill between these pockets like a needle. A needle that's miles away that he can't see. He has to trust his instruments and his equipment. A $30,000 diamond-tipped drill bit and a 1,000 horsepower engine capable of rotating almost 700 tons of pipe. Noel sends the drill bit down the hole to the ocean floor. Soon it will start to chip away at the rock below, burrowing a shaft towards the gas reservoir. When one length of the pipe has been pushed down the hole, the roughnecks connect another. This process continues until, hopefully, they hit their target. It will take at least eight weeks, if everything goes right. And the driller needs to keep a vigilant watch over his gauges the entire time. A pressure drop or change in drill speed could indicate impending disaster. A cave-in. During a cave-in, the walls of the hole collapse, destroying the well and trapping the drill bit thousands of meters below the surface. But drillers have an unlikely secret weapon to defend against cave-ins. Mud. On the drill floor, mud is everywhere. But this mud has no dirt in it, and it doesn't come from the sea floor. It's actually a sophisticated blend of chemicals pumped into the well to lubricate and cool the drill bit. The mud also performs another function. Its weight pushes out against the walls of the hole, helping to prevent cave-ins. Every type of rock that the drill passes through may need a different mixture of mud. Use the wrong blend and you could ruin a drill bit or destroy the well itself. So mud engineer Matthew Schofield can't afford mistakes. In his lab, deep within the bowels of the rig's hull, Matthew tests and retests his mud mixture until he finds the perfect recipe. Then roughnecks churn out more than half a million liters of the stuff. That's enough to fill six swimming pools. Like the blood in your body, mud is pumped through an elaborate circulatory system in the oil rig. Three giant pumps in the rig's hull first push the mud up to the drill floor, then down through the drill pipe. When it reaches the bottom of the well, it spurts out through openings in the drill bit, floods the hole and starts back up again, carrying with it bits of drilled rock called cuttings. When the mud and cuttings get to the top of the well, they are transported to three machines that separate the cuttings from the mud. This high-tech mud is so expensive, almost every drop is reused. And current laws allow these cuttings to be dumped back into the sea. If they were using toxic oil-based mud, every bit of chipped rock would have to be shipped back to shore to avoid contamination of the environment. Energy companies used to dump these toxic rocks back into the sea, but now they're acting more responsibly. In fact, today around the world, only 5% of petroleum in the sea comes from oil exploration and extraction. The key to controlling pollution is having all parts of the mud system work together flawlessly. It's also the key to safety. If there's not enough mud in the well, when the drill actually hits natural gas, the explosive gas can rush up and ignite. It's every rig worker's nightmare. A blowout. In the summer of 1988, explosions ripped apart North Sea rig Piper Alpha and woke up the world to the dangers of offshore drilling. 
A gas leak set off the first explosion, which was so horrific there was no time for an orderly evacuation. Platform is completely on fire from sea level to top. Uh, we have in fact 167 workers out of 225 were killed, mostly from toxic fumes. The official investigation found numerous violations of safety rules and led to many reforms. The Piper Alpha was the worst, but by no means the last, disaster aboard an oil rig. So today, on a rig like the Noble Pete, the workers participate in a seemingly endless series of safety drills. Attention all personnel, this is a drill. Today's simulation is that some scaffolding has collapsed. They've found one roughneck, he's been crushed. He's holding onto life by a thread. Emergency control. More people may have been injured, so they need to account for everyone on board. In the mess, driller Noel Shembry and assistant driller Paul Brehabus are responsible for making sure everyone is present. Yes, yes, yes. this is live board number two speaking. We have 15 people present, including myself. It's 7 p.m., so both the day and night crews are involved. The Noble Pete is ready for any emergency. This is a drill. With high-tech lifeboats that can brave fiery water. A speedboat to save men who fall overboard and a rescue boat that just circles the rig 24 hours a day, waiting for catastrophe. This is just a drill, but they make it feel real. That way, if there's a real accident, they'll save precious minutes, and maybe lives. We have ordered a helicopter to come uh, and pick you up, okay? If they were really summoning a helicopter, it would take 45 minutes to get here, and another 45 minutes to reach the nearest hospital in the Netherlands. That's not a comforting thought but it's the reality of life on the rig. Safety is always the number one concern, and not just in the 